This is part 2 of the Make it easy to install my dividing head system build. In part 1 we could see how I built this beautiful little feet that I can mount here on the bottom of my dividing head. And I also said that I need to cut some flats or a hex or whatever system. And to be able to do that, of course, the easiest way I think is using the dividing head. But yeah, of course, there is a. Uh, that's not gonna work. And then Howder 1951 came up with a fantastic idea. He said in the comments, why don't you just drill a hole in one in uh, this little feed so I can use a Tommy bar. Now this used to be a screwdriver, but I use it as Tommy bar for a lot of different things. So Howie, thank you very much. This is a brilliant idea. Simple and effective. That's how we like it. So let's start by doing just that. I just have to be careful that when I drill the hole here somewhere that it's not going to interfere with the thread I cut in here. Because it is more or less deep. So I'm going to try to drill the holes as low as possible. Sometimes when I'm working here on the milling machine, I just don't have enough light, which is really annoying. Most of the time I see exactly what I'm doing, no problem, but sometimes, like now for example, uh, now there's two solutions of course. Continue dreaming of better light or else do something about it. Much better. Howder nineteen fifty one, thank you again for your brilliant idea. I think it looks promising and I can even leave the vise in place if I have to, to make small parts the vise is not a problem it can stay. What I would like to do before I install the thing the way it should be installed is make this three feet exactly the same height. I made them on the late because I don't have the top side installed I don't have the really nice precision on my late for the moment so the height of these three feet could be a little bit different my idea is to install only the feet on the table and give them a little fly cut
And indeed, it's a good idea to think recutting the surfaces. I managed to install the thing and the deviation I installed here, of course, my test bar, uh, left and right is nothing, straight ahead, zero degrees, up and down over this distance, which is 120 millimeter, about, maybe four inch, I have a deviation of four hundreds is a bit over one foul. Now I think to make flats for a spanner that's more than sufficient. Of course for high precision clockwork it's not good enough. But I think it could be really easy to line it out by moving the table. So no big deal. And I also figured out that it's a 40 to 1. 40 turns here on the crank wheel, one turn on the outcoming spindle. And of course I would like to give this thing a try. On the same piece of scrap I used last time, I did cut a hex on here. Now I would like to see if my setup on these three feet is really stable enough to be able to use it the way it should be used. So let's cut for example a square on this one. Easy peasy! I think that worked really well. Depth of cut 2 mm and the thing didn't even think of moving. So I think it's a great result. What I also think is very nice is this height above the work table. I have here almost 120 mm. Is four and a half inch more or less which means I can install a chuck here three jaw four jaw whatever jaw chuck let's take this ring off oh, that was tight here I have a thread with a pitch of three Millimeter radius, I don't know, but it's not really important for the moment. It should be nice if I could make some kind of back plate that resists on this ring and, of course, screws up on this uh, thread. But my lathe for the moment cannot cut this thread. To do this, I need a 24 teeth gear, which of course I don't have. But maybe I can make one. Let's find out. I think I figured it out. Without cheating, without watching your videos, how you explain how uh, dividing heads work with a little bit of 
thinking it's not that complicated. I need to make a gear 2040. Right, a full circle, 360 degrees. Yeah, oh, 360 degrees. Divided by 24, that gives us 15 degrees for every two. My dividing machine head thing is a 40 to 1 ratio. So to make a rotation of 15 degrees, it's 40 because of 40 to 1. 40 times 15 degrees divided by a full circle gives me, gives you, gives everyone in fact 1.666 a whole bunch of sixths which means I have to do to set 15 degrees one rotation plus two thirds of a rotation. On my meat grinder plate there's diff different divisions of course and the smallest one is 33 holes. 33 one third of 33 is of course 22. So if I set my pin in number 33, I install my. Ah, it, it's not the, the right way, of course. Right, like this. 33. And I count 22 holes. Not the first one, because this is the zero hole. So one, two, three. Come on, pin. Twenty-two. This is two-thirds of a rotation. Of course, I have absolutely no idea if this is the right way of calculating things on the dividing head, but for me. This works. I think the best way to find out if my calculations are correct is of course by making a gear. But is there some time left? October. Yes there is. Yep. I made a gear blank with a cute little key slot in here. I also made a little arbor with also a cute little key slot in here. And of course a cute little key. This one comes of course here and then this uh, blank comes on this arbor and I also made a cutting tool because of course I don't have gear cutters so I made one I took a small gear this one is a 27 teeth gear I checked online the most cutters can make between uh, for these uh, gears of course between 24 and 32 so the model, the shape of this teeth should be more or less okay. So I copied my cutting tool which comes of course in here, yeah, somewhere. Right. 
let's do a little bit of assembly and try something. My cute little key doesn't want to cooperate. Depth of cut one millimeter. Here goes nothing. My cutting tool ball holder thing here is not rigid enough. But the goal is of course to see if my theory is correct and maybe not to make a gear. My theory on the blackboard seems to be correct because a gear and the most important now I know that this thing is rock solid it doesn't move at all so installing these three little feet below here I think it was a brilliant idea of course it was not a complete success. The dividing head and the fixing system no problem at all. But my cutting tool that I made out of this thing here, out of my neighbor's car I think, when I made it I welded a piece of high speed steel on the bottom side of this shank. No problem. And then I took smallest gear I have and I use it as a profile. This gear is completely worn, so the profile is not correct. And then one moment when I was on the angle grinder, on the bench grinder, I slipped. And so I cut a piece out that in fact I needed. Result is that this gear doesn't even look like a gear. But no problem. Now that I have this one, I can use it on my gear rack. That is of course a part of my shaper setup to make gears. And after I will have the perfect envelope cut on the shaper. Someone commented on my last week's video where I started this project that he also has an FT1 and a dividing head that is way too heavy. I don't remember your name, my friend, but you know what? Go for it. It works.